Huawei is very dangerous. Rarely does a country go to war with a private company. We have met the enemy and it is Huawei. But America has done just that. We're not going to do business with Huawei. Uh, Huawei represents a national security risk. But is this really about Huawei or is it something bigger than that? It's not can you trust Huawei, it's can you trust the Chinese government. And what is the threat? This is exactly what China wants. They want to divide Western alliances through bits and bytes, not bullets and bombs. So what is this war really about? And why is Huawei in the middle of it? Founded in China in 1987, Huawei is now the world's largest maker of telecoms equipment with revenues exceeding $103 billion. When you think about Huawei, you might think about the handset. That makes sense, since it sold 200 million of them in 2018 alone. But close to half of its revenue comes from selling network equipment. And it's this infrastructure side of the company that worries governments much more than the sort of consumer handset side. With Ericsson and Nokia, it's one of the three biggest manufacturers of this equipment. In fact, since 2014, it's outgrown all its competitors, reaching over 3 billion people. This is how networks function. Your phone sends a signal to a nearby tower using radio waves. Voice and data are passed over an internal network, run by your phone company, which connects your handset to other phone users and the wider internet. In other words, these antennas connect us all. But now, there's a new kind of network. The race to 5G is moving forward at full speed. From TV ads to presidential tweets. You've probably heard debates about the revolutionary 5G. Or... Although 5G is massively overhyped, it is coming. And Huawei is a leading force in this innovation. It will be a sort of big change, maybe not quite so enormous as, as, as people like to tell you. The other thing that people like to say that 5G will enable is this idea of uh, the Internet of Things. If you want things like self-driving cars that download detailed maps of where they're about to be, you need 5G to do that. If you want internet-connected door locks or CCTV cameras, maybe 5G is a way to connect those. But though this computerised smart future opens up new possibilities, it comes with a health warning. We're moving to a world where everything will be connected to the internet, but we haven't thought enough about security. That's the big fear about having a hostile power uh, control your 5G network. Because if entire networks are vulnerable, this opens the door to countries spying on one another. 5G networks must be secure. They must be strong. They have to be guarded from the enemy. In a rare interview with The Economist, Run Zhengfei, Huawei's founder and CEO, talked about the political storm surrounding his company. As the argument rages over the security of Huawei's products, the effects can be seen in some unexpected places. The biggest issue, I think, with all of this political turmoil surrounding the Huawei name is uncertainty. Joe Fresnel runs Eastern Oregon Telecom, a small network serving the people of this rural area. In rural remote areas, it's hard to connect with people. And so the internet becomes this really important way to connect with community. Herb, how you doing? How are you, Joe? The problem is that the network here relies on Huawei technology. You see, you're using the internet from Eastern Oregon Telecom to be able to yes. run, monitor, control all of these pivot irrigation systems. I have no idea how we do without it. The Huawei equipment was 30 to 40 percent less than everything else on the market, and it's more capable and uh, more reliable. This economic boom that's out here, all of this effective agriculture that's going on out here would not be effective or even possible without internet connectivity. It's a similar story around the world. Mobile phone users in developing countries have benefited from Huawei's attractive deals. But how is Huawei undercutting its competitors? Huawei can offer cheaper prices because they are heavily subsidized by the Chinese government. 
these are allegations that are strenuously denied by Huawei. Huawei is Huawei, China is China. Whether or how Huawei is connected to and subsidized by the Chinese government is unclear. But what is clear is this. China is the kind of country where if the party says jump, all you can say is, well, how high? Loyalty to the state is actually enshrined in China's intelligence law. Article 7, a 2017 edition, states that any organization or citizen shall support, assist and cooperate with the state intelligence work. Critics say this law means that when you buy Huawei equipment, you may be exposing yourself to surveillance by the Chinese intelligence services. And this makes governments very uncomfortable. Huawei is just a tool of the Chinese government. China is a difficult country for any company to be independent in. And when you look at that, the new intelligence law, you've got to have some concerns. This has made a lot of people worry that Huawei, given its close relationship to the Communist Party, and given the Communist Party's willingness to wield hard power, you could then end up in a situation where they can use that effectively as a weapon. The fear is that Huawei will leave backdoor vulnerabilities in its networks that would provide China with an opportunity to spy on its competitors and enemies. To counter this mistrust, Huawei has shared its code and allowed the likes of Britain's National Cyber Security Center to scan it for back doors. We do have researchers that have been going through it with a fine-tooth comb looking for exactly these. They've never found anything like that. Even so, the Trump administration remains suspicious. Huawei is something that's very dangerous. President Trump's escalating trade war with China. So if there's no solid security threat, why is America making an enemy out of Huawei? We cannot allow any other country to outcompete the United States in this powerful industry of the future. At least part of this is motivated by a desire to slow China's rise and to keep a world in which America is the dominant power for as long as possible. It seems as though the concern over Huawei is not only about America's security, but also its insecurity. And it's causing collateral damage at home as well as abroad. In May 2019, the Trump administration issued an executive order which not only forbade American companies from supplying Huawei with components, but restricted domestic networks from using its equipment. It's a move that feels like an own goal to Americans like Joe Fresnel. Worst case scenario is there's an all out ban. That means that three to six communities that are struggling, desperate for broadband connectivity, missing out on economic development opportunities, having young people flee their community and never come back, it would be a huge hit. And there's another uncomfortable truth that America can't ignore. Smartphone technology relies on a truly global supply chain. Take an average smartphone. Some contain components from more than 200 international suppliers. Screens might be made by Samsung in South Korea. The camera lens engineered in Germany. The chip could be designed by a California-based company and manufactured in Taiwan. The battery could come from Japan and the audio chip from China. But increasingly, hostility and lack of trust threaten to fracture these supply chains. This goes beyond Huawei. We are entering a period of increased vulnerability when it comes to cybersecurity and the internet. America's concerns about Huawei are understandable, but the risks can be managed by limiting the use of Huawei equipment to less sensitive parts of 5G networks. That way, it is possible to benefit from the low cost of Huawei's equipment while minimizing security concerns. You know, when we start talking about withdrawing and only doing business with companies that are really close allies or companies that are in the United States, that damages the, the global economy and the way that we function as a world. Billions of people around the world have benefited from increased connectivity, made possible by global standards and global supply chains. But if political mistrust divides the telecoms industry into rival camps, Everybody stands to lose. If you want to learn more about Huawei, you can click on the link opposite where you'll find further economist coverage and some research, data and studies used to make this film. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more films like this, then hit the subscribe button in the link below.